Hey guys, Sullivan Owen here in Philadelphia. So we are approaching Valentine's Day and that generally means roses. So um, since I am actually taking my first Valentine's Day off in 10 years and going to spend it with my niece and nephew, I thought that I would give you guys a dozen roses and that's a dozen of my favorite neutral roses. These are, um, they'll, I'll talk you through all 12 varieties. I am photographing them, obviously, or filming them on um, my black tabletop, but I also did shoot them on a white surface. Let's talk about a dozen neutral roses for you guys. I think it makes more sense to kind of talk about them together. I took individual shots of a rose at 24 hours of hydration and we're at three days of hydration and opening. And I think that that's pretty much like a good gauge. Uh, I've done nothing to these roses except uh, clean the thorns and leaves off of them and then put them in clean water. So no flower food, which is something that I sometimes do. And um, I have not boiled them. If you wanna see what I'm talking about with that, you can check out this video on boiling roses. There's a few of them that look almost identical and I have made myself a cheat sheet. So um, <clears throat> this is Cream La Perla and it is a somewhat pointy shape. Come on camera, there we go. So you can see it's kind of pointed. I do wonder what would happen if I did the boiling water trick on these because this is the one rose that did not open very much. So, um, but let's kind of go through them. We'll go from light to more tinted since I would consider almost all of these neutrals. To start, we have a true garden rose. This is called Princess Miyuki, and it has, it smells amazing. It's got like a really strong floral fragrance. So um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on videos before, but I have a very weak sense of smell in terms of smelling flowers. I don't know if it's like a mental block, so I don't get sick of anything but there are really only about 10 flowers that I can really truly smell. So uh, it used to happen when people would come into the studio, they'd be like, oh my God, it smells amazing in here. And I would just think, I think all floral work smells like kind of leaves, stems, and like damp to me at this point, but maybe that's just exposure, but I can smell this rose. So Miyuki is really, really gorgeous. It, I would consider it a clean, pure white garden rose with um, a nice form and kind of ruffle texture to the petals. They're really thin, fine, luminous petals. And uh, it doesn't open too much more than this, but you can see it's so heavily petaled that it's a, it's a good size. The only issue I have in working with Miyuki or Princess Miyuki, if we're being fancy, um, is that they sometimes have very weak necks and stems. So they are a heavy, multi-petaled rose. And if the stems are weak, they sort of look floppy, even if they're perfectly fine. And for you guys that are maybe just finding the channel, you can go back and watch some of my design videos where I talk a little bit more about color, but um, I tend to think about color in tonality and tint and um, some other interchangeable kind of words that will probably come up as we kind of go through these. But I would say that <clears throat> if there was any kind of undertone to this rose, it would have the teeniest bit of like a blush pink in the center. Next up is a rose that was really, really popular, I think like the 80s into the 90s, um, and it is called Polo. But it is a rose that really does not look like much. I'll show you. Um, here's what they look like, just kind of like after they've hydrated for a few days in just plain water. <clears throat> They're really not much to look at. They kind of need a little help to open up. I tend to open roses by puffing into the center, but you can see 
It has this like gorgeous garden rose kind of like cupped quartered effect and you can even see into the yellow-ish center. So this is a rose that takes a few days to really kind of come into its own. I feel like if you used it in its freshly hydrated, freshly received state, it, it wouldn't really, <clears throat> it doesn't sh do anything. But a few days later, I think it's just like, it has, if I would say anything, it has like a yellow to green undertone. So it's definitely not as clean of a white as Miyuki. And it has that sort of yellowish greenish undertone for like a very clean spring white rose. This is an affordable standard rose. And you kind of, if you let them open, you get that effect of like the showiness of a garden rose. Uh, for designers that work like myself that are very much about color and undertone and things like that, it's really important to know not just the, the flower that you're getting, rose, but what kind of, uh, as it opens, as it ages, where's that color gonna go for you? Okay, so polo. I think an underrated spring green, yellow based white rose that I think opens up beautifully, but it looks Eh, super lame in, in the wrapping. Um, Vendella. Uh, I would say Vendella Rose has sort of, uh, I, it's the very first rose I ever made an all rose arrangement with, so I have a soft spot for it. Uh, when it's well hydrated, even when it's well hydrated, it can still have a little bit of texture to the petals. So it's not necessarily as, um, what makes flowers luminous uh, is is kind of the smoothness of the petal. They're not actually shiny. It's just that the light is reflecting off of them. So the texture on this rose makes it um, on the outside of the petals in particular it tends to kind of age it and give it like a little bit of an antique feel. It's a pretty small rose in comparison. Uh, they do open up nicely and they have this beautiful kind of cream ivory center. A true ivory rose. I believe most wholesalers put it in the white category, but it is an off-white rose, especially when you see it next to Miyuki or Polo. So, uh, I, you know, I think I have a soft spot for it. It's a rose that I frequently buy um, just I kind of out of nostalgia for the first few years that I was working with flowers. All right, so next up is White O'Hara. Uh, white O'Hara, uh, O'Hara roses, there is white and there is pink. White O'Hara is a garden rose variety, or it's, I couldn't find any information on this, but it, it has the look and shape and size of a garden rose, but it's typically packaged in 25 stem bunches, which is more of uh, garden roses come in 12 stem bunches usually, or 10. Um, O'Hara's usually come in 25s. So it's sort of somewhere in between. I tend to think of it, it's kind of priced in between as well. There are certainly times of the year where you can get it more closer, closer to the price of a standard rose, but it is not necessarily um, gonna be at like a David Austin garden rose price. So um, this one after a few days, it's uh, three, three days old now, um, has aged out to a pale cream, but you can see in the 24 hour photo, it has like a little bit more blush to it. So uh, it's one of my more, um, my preferred kind of neutral event work roses because of that like slight hint of blush, uh, which in my opinion is sort of like beige in flowers. So uh, there's very few palettes that can't support a little hint of pink to something. Um, whereas if you took it with, you can see definitely the difference in undertone between Polo and O'Hara, Polo is gonna give you like a cleaner, green to yellow undertone, whereas the O'Hara is going to give you the, the cream to ivory to blush sort of undertone. And they all kind of depend, but this one also opens up beautifully. Although they're all kind of, I have been shuffling these around a little bit, but they are all white roses or are neutral to light roses are very prone to creasing. 
and um, let's see, and showing some damage on the edges. Um, some of this is just from creasing, some of it is from the oils in your fingers. So if you are new to designing with roses, you never want to grab them by the top and you want to avoid putting your finger into the center. If you're trying to open up a rose, we'll do it on this one when we get there. Uh, you want to massage it from the outside so you can peel off those petals. All right, so we did Vandella, we did White O'Hara. So I don't know that it is a hybrid, but it has, um, it's a nice balance between garden roses and standard roses. Okay, I have to redo that because that was wrong. All right, so the pointy rose is La Perla. This is Emily, which is very similar to Vandella in size and shape. It just has like the teeniest, teeniest bit more peachy warmth to it. This is Pastella, which I remember as being more peach toned, but this specific bunch has opened up as much more pink. And I'm not picking them up because I actually just filmed this whole section saying the wrong names for all of them. So it will be a lot easier for me if I just leave them sitting here. So, um, but the peachy, uh, you know, this really is truly reading very pink. I think so on camera as well. But my experience with it is that it's more sandy and peach toned than pink. So I did check all the packages, they were labeled correctly. So um, maybe it was just the bunch, maybe it's just the temperature, the weather, the time of year, who knows. But I would certainly consider all of them in the cream, tone, cream color range. And then, um, you know, maybe not my favorite shape on this guy, on La Perla, um, I think, Emily has opened up really beautifully, maybe even like a little bit larger and bigger than Vandella. So maybe those two kind of interchangeable. And then Pastella, this really does feel like it's veering into pink territory, but I feel like based on experience, it has more of a peach undertone. So, all right. Next up is another rose similar to White O'Hara that um, it's priced and bunched 25 some bunches like a standard rose, but has a lot of characteristics of that garden rose. So this is garden spirit or wedding spirit. They are two different roses, but they seem to be packaged and sold interchangeably. Like I think I ordered garden spirit and they sent me wedding spirit. Um, but it has this really gorgeous kind of peach warmth and a very garden rose-esque center. So if we put, um, you can see this is O'Hara, this is Garden Wedding Spirit. This comes in very tight and even after hydrating for a few days, uh, you do need to kind of massage it to get it to open up. And then I think I cracked that one when I was cutting them flat. But I think it's a beautiful, beautiful rose. And it definitely is heading into peach to pink territory. In fact, they look really pink. I'll show you what it looked like after 24 hours. They look very pink when you first get them. Almost too pink. But with um, some hydration and letting them kind of sit out or rest, uh, you can and letting them open up a little bit that color will disperse a bit. So these two roses This is quicksand and this is Sahara and They are Maybe like they are hugely popular roses these days um, They have that sort of neutral hint of color without being a true color kind of thing that is so popular in flowers these days. 
They photograph beautifully. They are, um, you can see that quicksand has a creamy rose tint to it, whereas Sahara has like a sandy warmth to it. And they have this kind of antiqued sort of color in the center. They open up beautifully. They are getting more and more expensive because they're just so popular. Um, they are roses that I used, I mean, to the point of overkill, I felt like it was the only thing I was ordering for maybe a good year of weddings. Uh, they, I mean, they do, they look, they're, they're truly, part of why I called this neutrals and not white cream is because I use these flowers, these colors as true neutrals and they sort of set off. Um, if I was doing pink to brown, to even jewel tones, you could use either of them. And then this is where I think really knowing your undertones and knowing the nuances of your palette kind of come in. Um, if you want to play up some more uh, springtime, which tends to have blue-based undertones or greens and things like that, I think quicksand would be the choice. If you were trying to play up warmth um, golden colors, uh, a little bit of like a fall feeling. I think Sahara is a good choice. However, Sahara has had like rough seasons over the years where they come in wimpy, meaning they come in small, they don't open well, um, they suffer from uh, air blockage, things like that. I don't honestly know if that's because as they become popular, they sometimes sit and get stored longer or people stockpile them or they're not being, they're, they're, they're being grown for speed and not necessarily quality. I don't know. Um, I was most pleased that this came in looking so nice because it really is hit or miss with, with Sahara in particular. Quicksand can be pretty reliable and um, you just kind of want to know your supplier. But both standard roses, both 25 cent bunches, both pretty reasonably priced, though 10 if you were going to put all of these guys, um, maybe I'll do that at the end, I'll kind of list like my experience price per stem. So with that being said, if you're looking for substitutes, that's partially why I wanted to show you guys all together um, that there are other flowers that kind of can help you achieve some of those nuances, uh, though, you know, when you see them all together here, I think they do stand out as pretty special and unique. The cats don't care that I'm trying to film right now. They're having like a little game of tag in the other room. All right, so last up is something that I haven't really seen in other neutral rose profiles or, you know, um, and that is the inclusion of two truly, uh, uh, they're, they're considered lavenders by most wholesalers. So, and that would be mentha and Earl Grey. So I didn't include maybe the most popular neutral brown lavender in this because it tr to me it's truly a color. That's amnesia rose. But I did think mentha next to quicksand was really interesting. And again, it kind of depends. I would really encourage, um, I think, truly exploring color and knowing the color tones and undertones of your flowers is so so critical for success, uh, especially if you're ordering flowers online. Um, but I thought this was fun to show that this is quicksand, this is mentha, and mentha has a lot of the same warmth. It just has this almost beige blue undertone, whereas this has the kind of, it leans towards the pink undertone. So I, I do feel like you could use them very similarly, but the mentha is almost more neutral. Like if we do them, let me see here. Which these really interesting. Like for me, I can see different colors working with each of these. And that's why I would say they're all kind of neutral. And as I look at that shot, the overhead shot, I think 
I like mentha, but that may also be because I've been looking at Sahara and quicksand for way too long. Mentha is kind of newer. It runs the gamut on pricing. It can be um, can be harder to find. Um, they're going to vary from supplier to supplier. I don't know if that's due to rootstock or just cultivation practices, etc. But I do think it's cool, and it's something with a blue lavender to gray undertone which I don't think any of these have and that would be the same for Earl Grey which I gotta say um if you order it uh, a lot of times it's called lavender Earl Grey obviously it's not lavender it has truly like a blue to gray undertone and so uh it's it's an it, it's almost an off-white to me but that's why I keep talking about like the, you want to know the undertone. Like it looks particularly cool and gray, I think, against the black surface. But on the white surface, it also looks cool. So um, I, I think a, a, a rose that I'm going to be exploring more. It's been around a little while. It's big rose. I've pulled a lot of the petals off. It shows a lot of wear and tear. Um, but it is very heavily petaled. It puffs open nicely. And it's just got that kind of like smoke gray color, which is pretty cool and pretty hard to find. I think that my point in bringing this together was to kind of show you that you don't really need to go get a dyed brown rose or a dyed gray rose. There are, there are options that exist in those kind of soft neutrals. And if you pair it with, I used it in this kind of blue palette recently and lavender um, and blue is something that I'm gonna be exploring a lot more in future videos. And I'm growing some of my own flowers in these kind of smoke gray blue colors just to kind of see what I can do without buying things that have dye added to them because I do think um, while I enjoyed working with the dyed carnations like immensely and I still have the spray painted plumosus that I bought I think at this point like four months ago um, it's just you know I do think flowers are their most interesting in their natural state so I'm hoping to do more of these kind of color studies to show you that you can achieve kind of very subtle and unusual color combinations without using dyed and spray painted material. So, all right guys, well, I'm gonna keep monitoring these. I will put the vase life and price range information up here for you. I will link you to my local wholesaler based in Philadelphia, but they're on the East Coast. And then I will also include um, information for some of my favorite wholesalers in New York, some of whom recently merged to create, um, I'm not sure the details of it, but um, a big floral group. Thank you so much for watching a dozen neutral roses for you guys. I'm going to take what's left of these guys after we, I'm going to put a few aside to check longevity and vase life. And then I'm going to try to make a giant bouquet using as many of them as I can. And I look forward to the spring season of videos with you guys. So lots of projects going on with the garden. I have lots of, of interesting stuff that I've been working on around specialty flower growers that I hope to be able to share with you soon. And I am learning as much as I can about specific flower categories and have learned a ton about roses and bearded iris and peonies and uh, all kinds of stuff. So I really look forward to sharing those with you guys in the spring season of videos. So Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you love all things flora like I do, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys soon.